speaker for the third session today is Ms. Vinita Deshmukh. Vinita Deshmukh, ma'am, is the consulting editor of Corporate Citizen and Money Life, wherein she has a weekly column on stories based on right to information. She is an award-winning journalist who has a multifaceted career in journalism for the last 26 years. She has won the prestigious Chameli Devi Jain Award for Outstanding Media Person in 2009 for her investigative series on Dow Chemicals. She also won the Statesman Rural Reporting Award twice in 1998 and 2005 in Maharashtra. Among her other awards, she has also won one for Excellence in Journalism in 2010 from the Top Management Consortium, that is the TMC. She also co-authored the book To the Last Bullet with Vinita Kamte that covered the courageous story of taking on the establishment after the police officer Ashok Kamte was killed in action in the 2611 Mumbai terror attack. Her longest span with incisive journalism was with the Indian Express Pune from 1987 to 2006. We are honoured to have you here, ma'am. I now request our principal to felicitate the speaker. Good afternoon everyone, being the last speaker is not a very happy situation <laughs> and especially when the earlier two speakers have just given you some brilliant uh, insight into the RTI Act and I know that you know a lot of you would love to ask questions so I will limit myself to some groundwork you know although at the macro level it's like the RTI Act is very much there but it may be not uh, you may not get information however this act has empowered individual even till the village village le level and it is just not breaking national scandals but even if you take your individual issues if it is pension it may be an individual issue but it has a reflection to the large social problem if you're talking about the garbage in your neighborhood it reflects the situation in your city, right? So even if you are asking for personal information, often it is uh, for the social good and it is socially relevant. So quickly I will just tell you a few stories of what happened. How do you do this? So let's take the first case of Vinita Kamte. Everybody has heard of the 26-11 Mumbai terror attack and we all have heard of the three brave officers which was uh, ATS Chief Himan Karkare and Ashok Kamte and Vijay Salaskar who had been killed in one episode which was a Kama Hospital episode. And unfortunately the media has covered every other, the Taj, the Leopold Cafe but not much is not only known about this incident but the media, the um, Home Ministry and the Mumbai Police have given only one statement saying that we don't know how these three officers went there and they didn't know the seriousness of the situation and you had that uh, important columnist of the newspapers saying that they were fools, that they, it was so foolish for them to go there, etc, etc. That's okay for us to read it. But when Vinita Kamte, it was a very husband who was the only IPS officer who had uh, uh, who was trained in sophisticated weapons like AK-47 and who never shirked his duty and was known as the bravest officer in India. You know, she wanted to ask as to what happened and how did my husband die. So she wrote a letter to the, and even the home minister, the chief minister, anybody who came to cons condole her, she asked the same question and they said, we don't know, they, they just went. So she wrote a letter to the Mumbai police commissioner seeking details of what of what went into his the death of these three officers. So they did not reply at all. And so she decided to use the Artia Act. So under the Artia Act, she uh, applied for seeking information on all the call log records, that is audio and manuscript. Just to give a reference, after the 1993 Mumbai riots, 
the Justice Shri, uh, Shri Krishna Commission was set up and he made it mandatory that any such riot situation anywhere in the country, the police have to uh, record uh, the audio conversation between the control room and the officers and constables on ground zero. So, uh, minute to minute. And after they are recorded audioly, uh, by audio, in the next couple of days or very soon, they have to be transcribed and put it in a handwriting form. So, every control room has this record. And therefore, she applied for that. Now, the PIO, he got uh, illegal instructions from Joint, Commis Joint Police Commissioner Rakesh Maria saying that this is private information, this is uh, harm any uh, other investigation we do and therefore she should not be given the information. So armed with that, she filed the first appeal to the appellate authority in the Mumbai police. He was very courageous and he wrote that her husband has sacrificed his life for the nation and as a wife, she has every right to get this information and the Joint Police Commissioner has not given any valid reason to deny her the information, so she should be given it within 15 days. And that's how Vimita Kamte got the South Mumbai control room records uh, in audio as well as call log records. She and her sister, Revati, who is now a psycho judge, they burned the midnight oil and they trans went through every call, rec call log record. It's a very long story for me to tell you here, but the fact is that it was uh, we, it was known that Ashok Kamte had nothing to do with South Bombay because he was the additional commissioner of the Eastern Region. However, Gafur, the, poet, uh, the police chief, actually called him up at 10 p.m. and asked him to head towards South Mumbai as it was seen to be an unusual, unusual situation <coughs> and told him to go to the Trident. But when he was uh, approaching there, he asked, all those call records are there in the book to the last bullet, order sir. To that joint uh, police commissioner Rakesh Maria said, now go to the back gate of the Kama hospital because uh, uh, additional commissioner Date has been uh, shot by the terrorists and he's uh, injured and two constables had already died. And that's how he came to the back gate of the uh, Kama hospital. Mm -hmm. ATS chief is Karkare and he was told that they were in the CST railway station but by then this terrorist had gone already to the um, terrace of the Kama hospital and that's how he did not need any instructions and he came there. Vijay Salaskar was called by the crime uh, headquarters because he worked there but on the way he saw both these officers there and therefore as a protocol he had to wait with them. And then there's a huge story of how um, um, Karkare, there's an 11.20 p.m. call log record which states that this seems like a terror situation. We are at the back gate, so cordon of the front gate of the Kama hospital with at least 150 policemen and call the army immediately. Thereafter, there was no conversation. There was no communication. They were waiting for that. And then at 12.40 a.m., they got a call log record, a conversation from the Mumbai control room saying that the two terrorists have gone towards the uh, metro theater side. Which means, if you know the geography of uh, Mumbai, St. Xavier's, it is beyond that. So, this Kama Hospital, St. Xavier's and metro is beyond that. And therefore, they went together because before that they had one vehicle, but the constable who was bleeding profusely ran from the Kama hospital and came asking for help at the back gate. So they had to send him to save his life. Ashok Kamte's car, which was filled with ammunition, since there was no communication, the crime police stopped him from entering the lane and asked him to go walking. So he just had his AK-47 and his two constables and none of the ammunition was allowed to come in. And because they got the terrorists have left the Kama hospital, they went in the jeep and they were ambushed. Besides that, the call law records also prove that 45 calls had gone from that housing society where, which is just next to the, uh, it is a nurses residential society, saying that we can see two terrorists who were putting in the uh, uh, bullets in the parking space 
and that uh, the police should come and close both the sides. One such call was four and a half minutes and yet nobody was sent. And when they were ambushed, first um, uh, Kamte had uh, fired on the you know, palm of um, Ajmal Kasab. Thereafter, Ajmal Kasab, they had thrown the officers down out on the road. Ashok Kamte was in police uniform. And after three minutes, the police van passed by, saw the three officers lying on in the road, but did not pick them up. It was only after 45 minutes when that constable Jadav, who was behind, and uh, they thought that they shot all the, there were five constables behind and three officers in that um, police. They thought that they had killed everybody, but Jadav was alive. And when he reached, you know, the place where they finally caught this Ajmal Kasab, that's when he said that Sahib Tita Padle Leahit. And when the ambulance came, at that time, uh, Karkare, um, uh, yeah, Karkare was, of course, he had died because it was on his uh, chest and neck. But Kamte uh, died of profuse building, uh, bleeding because he was shot only on the shoulder. shoulder and Salaskar was alive for 10 minutes when he was in the hospital. And so, this is a case, it is so shocking that the three officers died and were not given help despite the fact that the crime branch, every branch of the police plus the police headquarters in South Mumbai is two minutes to four minutes away from that area. And there is much more, you know, I won't delve into it. But it is just because of the right to information, what I wanted to tell you, that Vinita Kante could actually procure all these records which have been put in black and white. And unfortunately, 10 years down the line, she is still fighting because they have gone and changed the records, crucial records of that episode. So by mistake, they sent it to Vinita. So now she has got two manual records which show different timings. You know, the one timing which shows that they are already there and in the hospital, but it is shown in one record that they are still at the back gate of the Kama Hospital. And today, unfortunately, the Maharashtra government has gone against the uh, uh, CICs. I mean, um, at that time, the State Chief Information Commissioner, Mr. Suresh, what's his name? Yeah, was, uh, Suresh Joshi gave a fantastic CIC order in which he had asked uh, the Mumbai police, like, who is responsible and that all this further information has to be given. Now the CI, uh, now the, um, sorry, state government has gone to the high court against that CIC order and saying, and in the uh, court, they have said that she's creating high drama by asking us, you know, these questions. Such is the case. But the fact is she's still fighting and we are coming up with a second revised edition of to the last bullet in the next two, three months to know what happened. But without RTI, she would not even uh, have been able to check out how her husband died because for the Mumbai police and the home ministry, it was it was not an answerable thing. So that's one thing. So the next we come to Dow Chemicals, which, which Mr. Shailesh Gandhi was talking about. So in 2010, I was the editor of Intelligent Pune. And some villagers and activists came to my office and said that, you know, Dow Chemicals is coming up somewhere near Chakran and they are a part of the Union Carbide, which had killed thousands in Bhopal and therefore it should not come here. So I told them that it is, it is okay to go on the road and say that, you know, uh, morally that they are not allowed to come here. But for a journalist, journalist to write beyond that, you need bare facts. So, and what is the kind of permission that has give, been given? Why have they come here? These were some of the questions I had to understand before I write. And therefore, I decided that as you know, Section 4 of the RTI, the implementation of it, or used by citizens rather, is in Pune, first time in the country, wherein Mr. Vijay Kumhar uh, actually did a Section 4 way back in 2005. And now the Maharashtra government, you know, has asked every office to keep the offices open. Nevertheless, I decided to use section 4 because there was no time to put a sex, section 6 application and wait for 30 days. When I went to MIDC, so I had to go to MIDC which allots the land, to the MPCB which gives clearance for 
pollution etc because it was a chemical uh, so called research center and to the environment ministry in mantralaya to uh, get the further whatever the permissions have been given so when i went to mitc i was very surprised like i armed myself with all the section for clauses to show him just in case he said that you know we can't give you this information but that young regional manager of mitc just looked at me pause for 5 minutes and just called his assistant and he told him show her the dow chemicals flies whatever she wants and give it to, to her uh, give her xeroxes and we are not going to charge her for it so you know we sat me and mr vijay kumar sat for 2 to 3 hours took all the copies of the documents and when i for, opened the first page now before this to give you a background the dow chemicals has said that they are a research center they have been given 100 acres of land near chakan they had advertised full page advertisements that we are not going to use a single chemical we are going to enhance the environment social environment uh, and the natural environment of where we where we were and we want to give jobs to 650 scientists and engineers but on the first page itself they had been given uh, permission for as a manufacturing plant and they were to use 65 chemicals out of which uh, i researched and found out that 22 were under the schedule one of the epa act which is means they are absolutely dangerous no chemical factory is supposed to be near 3 kilometers of any big river but this one was just 1.5 kilometers from the tributary of uh, indrayani then they had already cut 14800 trees and they were saying that they want to improve the environment so armed with this i had not only really held a press conference but i went to the villagers and explained to them that instead of fighting on some moral issues of bhopal gas a plant where nobody is going to hear you have to you have to know that if this factory comes here this is what is going to happen but this is what they going to do so bg uh, korse patel also really helped in the on the ground and then the sustained efforts of the villagers after which then i went to the environment secretary and was very uh, you know surprised and happy to find that based on all this information they had formed a committee and the committee had completely changed the rules saying that they need to have stricter rules and they need to be more transparent anyway long and short of it this went on i i wrote for 10 months continuously every week in telgen pune and thereafter the newspapers followed it up only when the villagers started burning the when it became a crime story burning that uh, place there and in 2010 can you believe that a, a multinational company like dow chemicals who had bribed in millions right from the central government to here they were rejected by 21 countries they returned the land and said that we are walking out of pune district so that is the power of rti that because of this information and that's why wrote that book the mighty fall and uh, so this would not have happened if we didn't have this citizen empowerment power so you know i just you know leave it to the experts i think we should leave it to the experts like mr shailesh gandhi dr anupam saraf who really know the law intricately and trying to improve it and trying that it should not be diluted but on the ground level if each one just keeps doing like you said once a month if you keep using rti you know that would really make them all nervous and remember every government officer is nervous about rti you put out the application as a quick case you know um, so as to i had done a lot of campaign for the pune passport office which was in a total disarray okay so during i won't talk about my campaign you can read it in the internet but there was this one payush rai he was a uh, software engineer and for 10 months like the status was that his passport is printed but for 10 months he was just not getting a, a the his passport and he had to forego two appointments abroad so finally he contacted me so i told him i'll draft you a rti you take this uh, that application and go to the passport office here on senapati bapet road and in case there is any problem just give me a call so he went and they the person on the window said no 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 in this office no rti applications are allowed so he called me up so i told him give me the phone so i said look you are a government authority write it down the reason why no rti applications are write it down sign it and give it to me 
So then uh, she said, uh, she kept the phone down and then in, she did, uh, told him, just wait, it is there a better note. So he sat for two hours and can you believe they actually handed him over the passport, which was supposed to be couriered and it was just like there. So, okay, this is very interesting. This is Mr. Sharad Farke. He is an ordinary man, retired. If you were walking on the road, you wouldn't give a second look to him. But what happened is that in 2010 October, he went to the ATM of Bank of India to withdraw 1,000 rupees. First time he did not come, but the second time he did get his 1,000, but he saw that 2,000 has been debited. So he wrote, you know, went to the manager, they, he was treated like a cockroach. He came back, he wrote letters, nothing happened. So he just... Uh, decided ki why not use the Atya Act. So he went to the Reserve Bank of India and he found one circular. Like he did in October, in March 2010, there was a circular by the RBI that if the bank does not credit your wrongly de debited account, then uh, within 12 days, then the bank has to pay 100 rupees per day penalty and put it in the customer's account. So armed with that, he made a Xerox copy of that. He put in his RTI application, like, you know, Mr. Gandhi had said, the, you know, what, what, which is the officer, who is the officer who is in charge of this, what action has been taken, what is the uh, limit for you to put in that account, all those five, six questions he asked, and he put, in the, uh, put it on the RTI. And miraculously, with, uh, till then, you know, about 60 days had passed by. And miraculously, in his account, he had, or 40 days, he had 4,000 rupees plus his 1,000 rupees. So he got 5,000 rupees into his account without any question, which he was struggling so hard and he did not get it. Okay, so he decided that let me, you know, there must be so many customers in so many banks who are suffering the same fate. So he put the RTI applications to seven banks. He got a lot of information. He pursued it after that. As a result of which, one of the even private banks got scared that there are such guys around, you know, to hound them. So... <laughs> Here, one bank, I forget the name, has made a software in which within three minutes, if the customer's account is wrongly debited, it gets credited. And now, Reserve Bank of India, taking note of this man who is no more, he just recently passed away, he, they have brought down the days to six days. So all of you must be very, must be aware that so many of us face, can face such situation and there is one uh, gentleman in Pune who is such a common faceless man but he has created a revolution by helping us uh, for bank bankers being alert. Next. Okay, now see this. You know, Aishwarya at that time, she was about 9 or 10 years old, that was about 4 or 5 years back. So she was going to school in Lucknow and in front of a school there was a huge public garbage dump and during the monsoons the, the children had a, uh, obviously a tough time to go through that slush and besides the stink all the year round and her aunt uh, was using RTI. So she told her that uh, you know uh, the, earlier the school had written to the com municipal commissioner nothing happened. So she asked her why don't you just file RTI, there is no age limit right? To file RTI, yeah, you can file it from the day you are born. So, <laughs> she filed the RTI asking that uh, what is the um, uh, land use as per the development plan? She just wrote uh, according to according to your uh, uh, you know plan, what is this land meant for? And she got an answer that it is meant for public library. So, armed with that information. She wrote to the municipal commissioner, first the entire garbage was clean and now it is already a public library. So, because, so this is what, you know, RTI uh, is micro, at, at micro levels, it has uh, become a very handy weapon and a non-violent weapon. I always say that it is a Gandhian philosophy, RTI Act, because first you have to take out more chars and what not, you go a hundred times with any group to your municipal commissioner, nobody is going to listen to you. But here, just with a pen and paper, or just with a visit to the office, 
you know, you can just ask for information and you damn have to get it. There is no, you know, say, oh, you are Vinita Deshmukh, that's why you get it. You know, these are the things people tell me. So I said, no, every person is empowered. But we Indians don't believe because first of all, your parents will scold you if you use RTI. You know, they, I know that uh, there were these young girls who were so enthusiastic to learn the, this to attend my RTI workshop. One fine day, they came and told me that our dads have said, first you do your engineering and you uh, achieve something in your academics and then you start doing any all this uh, faltu activism. But this is not activism. People think that, you know, RTI is some activism. It is not. It is just one tool given to every citizen. Why go and uh, face the um, uh, official, you know, when he is not going to listen to you anyway. And with this, he just gets scared. So many times that you just ask for RTI, and at least in Pune, they are very alert and they just provide you information. These are the law, law college students and the one who is on the left is Kumar Sh Shanu and uh, all these law college students and some young lawyers, they have formed this uh, uh, association called WIP. Now with that, they are only using RTI for transparency and to further their case in the courts. But first they only use RTI. Now the recent case, you know, you almost have read about the CBSE board examination which was uh, charging a bomb to give your answer sheets. You know, today they fought, uh, fought for it at the Delhi High Court and the um, uh, verdict that was given that CPSC has to follow the RTI Act and give it for, you know, 2 rupees per page. And the CBSC has also put it on the website that they are going to do that. Then they had recently take a, taken up, if they went to the High Court, I don't know whether this is, um, the verdict has come. That they said, you know, in this quote, these judges sit there and God knows what they mumble. Nobody understands around. Even if you are standing at, you know, 10 feet. So they are saying that to introduce microphones as a mandatory accessory for every court hearing. So now that case is pending. And before that also, they were the ones who fought a lot for the CBSC thing. And coming to CBSC, the RTI Act is uh, makes it mandatory for answer sheets also of any public um, uh, university or college to make and also private institutions right now because CBSE is an independent institution so every private educational institution also to give you the answer sheet and all of you must follow it because uh, uh, and there is nothing to fear because earlier you have your revaluation and that is you not know, done haphazardly. You cannot see what is done. <coughs> but here you ask for a copy of answer sheet. And today, after the SSC board, I just read that I think last year, there were more than 23,000 students who had asked for the copy of the answer sheets. And I came to know, you know, offhand, that when the students of Symbiosis told me that, no, no, today now I have to see my answer sheet. <coughs> yeah. I said, what do you mean your exams are all over? They said, no, Simba has started a method that after the corrections, they give it to the students. And then you see whether we have corrected it you know, properly. We don't want anybody to go to RTI. And so, you know, this whole change has taken place. It's very funny how RTI has affected so many government people. Next. Before that, just, just one more there is. No, come forward. Yeah, so anyway, I think I've covered all and much more. If you read newspapers, you obviously see so many such RT applications by citizens. And now, uh, so therefore, I wish that each one of you, because you are the generation that is going to take the RTI Act forward. You know, stalwarts like Mr. Gandhi, Dr. Arunapam, Swara, uh, Saraf, Arna Azare, uh, Aruna Roy, so many of them in every part of the country. When Congress uh, brought that act, what they thought is that, you know, some stupid five intellectuals will sit and read it and so will affect us. But they didn't know the power that in every state, there are common people who are getting empowered and getting their works done. So please don't hesitate. You need not tell your parents that you're filing an RTI application. They won't even come to know because after 18, all of us are adults. Right? Thank you very much for hearing me out. And now I can ask a question on this question.